No standing eight box of podcast. We discuss every organization and weight class. With your host, Bronx Bomber, educated with the craft. Punch a topic hard like heavyweights hitting the bag from the top rank to the upcoming. Washed up to the dark horse. Champs, number one contenders. Quick jab or sharp cross. We saw Come get it. Tuning in, you can have it. Internationally known. Our information is valid. See, we on a higher plane. No two episodes the same. We get better as we train, so on top we remain. Come join the conversation, the same sight you gain. And outside of the rain, we do the damn thing. All right, fight fans, welcome to another edition of No Stand 8 Box of Talk. Uh, brought to you by New York Fights. And today, I got a super hot. Uh, super battleway prospect. He's been on my show before. You read his story before. Super battleway prospect Elijah Pierce, seventeen to two with big fourteen wins coming by way of knockout. And I'll tell you, this cat has been on fire the last few uh the last few months. Elijah, how you doing? I see you in the airport, man. You been doing some traveling? Yeah, man. I'm good, brother. Um, yeah, I had I had went down to to Philly. Um, with my people's um, oh uh, well, my. My my manager, uh, Chief and Petrov, he's uh he has a lot of contacts out there. Uh, so I was kicking it with with my boy Jonathan Rodriguez and Tanjay Teasley. Uh, they're, they're um they're what's that junior what's that uh junior bantamweights. Yep. And uh and uh and and what in a welterweight, excuse me. So you know I was just getting some work out there with them, and then um you know telling with Coach Indio and. We ended up going to the Boost in this fight. You know, we was VIP at the at the yeah, yeah. Uh, Boost in this fight. So it, it was a good thing, man. It was dope to see it here live and personal, especially right before, you know, August 4th. I'm getting ready to headline my first main event on the zone. So, you know, I'm looking forward to to the atmosphere, the energy, all of that. I mean, it was electric. Yeah, man. I, I, I'm i excited for you, man. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. But before we get to your fight on the zone, your first uh, TV spot live, on August uh, 4th, it is, right? Yes, sir. All right. Let me tell you, man. I mean, you came on my show. Uh, and we did a nice little coverage for your New York fights. And it, it, you had this mindset. You had this vision uh, where you wanted to take your career. You were ready to elevate your career and ready to show people what you were about. You've taken all this wolf mentality. What Since that interview, which was seven months ago, walk the readers, walk the listeners of this show how your career has catapulted in just a few short months? Well, like I said, I mean, just um, it's it's evident. Everything is evident. Like I said, the hard, I'm, every day I'm putting it in, putting in the work. Um, one by one, I'm knocking them down. Like I said, whoever they put in the ring in front of me, you know, I, I'm taking them out. Like I said, I I'm, I don't talk just to talk. You know what I'm saying? I, everything that I say is very meaningful to me. You know, I have a lot of passion when I speak because it's coming from a place. Uh, it's coming from a, a, a real place. Like I said, I've endured a lot. I've went through a lot, and I've overcame a lot, and I'm still overcoming. And I'm and I'm going to continue to to um, to prove every time I step in the ring. Yeah, and and in our last interview, you concluded our interview. You said, "Whoever wants to smoke, they could get the smoke." And then you you had a fight shortly after that, and you smoked that cat in like two rounds. You got that cat out of there. Oh and then, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Mm. So you got that cat out there. You had your business, like you said you was gonna do. But then after that, it just seemed like you couldn't catch a break, man. You had fights lined up, man. People didn't want to fight you. You called out everybody named Mama. Nobody, nobody lined up to get the smoke. And then eventually it comes around to Tremaine Williams, for, former. Uh, title contender Tremaine Williams, talk to us about what, how, how you felt when you finally got that fight. What was your mentality? Oh yeah, see, like the whole thing with him was like, it's just crazy. Like I said, how how life works out and God, how God orchestrates things. Because um, even when we was in camp together for JoJo Diaz uh, years ago, like 2019, uh, to help him get ready, help JoJo get ready for Tevin Farmer. Like I just always had this feeling. I had told him, told him then when we when we even camp that I was thinking about going to twenty two, or whatever. So um, I don't know. I just always had this feeling in mind that I would end up fighting him one day. 
but I just thought, you know, I never actually thought it would happen, but I just, I just thought I was so crazy. But um, yeah, like I said, I think, I think at the end of the day, he underestimated me. He thought I was still the same Elijah Pierce from 2019. You know, of course, I was probably like what 20, 22, 23 years old. So, you know, it's been that was that was three or four years ago. So obviously, he he, he wasn't. <laughs> He wasn't hip to what was going on with me. Like I said, I've I've always been a, a a talented and high caliber fighter, but I've um you know I, I was very untapped. Like I said, for the most for the majority of my whole boxing career, uh, since I was a kid, I've only had my father. It's just been me and my dad. I mean, you know, you know that. So uh, until like the latter part of my amateur career, where I had got, I mean, in um uh yeah, to the latter part and, and somewhat. Uh, early part of my pro career, you know, I, I was working with a coach out in, in Atlanta, but, you know, for the most part, it was just all my dad. So, you know, um, yeah, like I said, my dad's an excellent coach, you know, Coach Andy Pierce. But at the end of the day, you know, he, he was uh, pretty much self-taught. You know, he, he, he had nobody really showing him the ropes on how to be a coach or anything like that. He had to, you know, learn everything as, as he went along. So, you know, of course, I never had the same um, – I just, I just didn't have the same necessarily knowledge as, as everyone else, or, or I won't say everyone else, but, you know, as many other fighters, like, you know, it, when it came to some of the politics with boxing, I just, uh, we didn't know about it. So we had to kind of, you know, learn from experience, you know, and over the time, you know, we're, we're continuing to grow together. So um, every, every fight um, I see, like, it just now, I'm, I'm starting to become very, very seasoned now. And I, I can see the difference in my older fights when I watch them. My IQ is 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 miles miles bigger than what than it uh, used to be. Um, my my fight style has evolved tremendously. Like I said, I, I'm a um, you know, like I said, I'm I'm looking forward to finally showcasing it on live TV and people finally get to see you know uh, uh you know live live and direct what the wolf is all about. And, and I mean, really, just um, me finally stepping into what I'm supposed to. I was supposed to be a top tier fighter a long time ago. And, 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 and you know, I went through some personal stuff and ultimately I'm here now. And I, I work I worked extremely hard to get here. And and I'm I'm definitely gonna take full advantage of it when the time comes. I'll get for it. Yeah. Man, you know, uh I know I know you, man, when you you were just just started your, your career as an amateur, man. You were but nothing nine, ten years old when I when I met you. And uh, so I know you. I know you and your dad are dedicated to this. I know you and your dad have put this work in, but the the work and 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 the effort and the, and the knowledge because both of you, coach and and and, and fighter, are, are very good at what you do. But you just needed a team around you to get you to that next level, unlike right. the other fighters. So it, had you had you had that team, that other fighters, I guess is what you're saying. You, right. you would have been a you, you would have been a top ten, uh, cont- you know. Top ten prospect now, even a contender now, you know. Absolutely, gotcha. All right. But nevertheless, man, everything has its due timing, you know. And 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 you're here now, and your last two wins had catapulted you damn near fifteen slots in the rankings. Because I think when I talked to you, were number thirty two in the world, uh, or thirty seven, something like that. And now the WBC got you ranked at fourteen. And and mm-hmm. last time I checked the rankings, which is a few minutes ago, <laughs> this was interview. Make sure nothing change. WBC got you ranked at 14, so you're only four slots away from being a top 10 super battle in the world. WBA got you at 15. Okay, so you're right there, man. You're, you're you're right there. So how does that feel finally to reach the top 25? Oh, I mean it's it's a blessing. Like I said, I can do nothing but give all glory to God. You know. Um, He's orchestrated this path for me, you know, due to the due to the decisions that I've made, you know, for my own life. Um, and, and and that's something, you know, that my dad would, would often tell me, you know, a lot. He would say, you, you you reap what you sow. And um ultimately I I've come to understand that the more I, the more I get older, you know, a lot of the decisions that I've made, even in, even when um when I was married and, and everything else, like a lot of the Things that happened during during my progression up until this point has has I've just shown it's been shown, and um, God has really just 
all, all the stuff that I was asking for, he, he gave it to me when it was the right time. And it was uh, ultimately up to me to decipher when, what and how I was going to go about it. And um, I think once I started to really put myself first and put my career first and, well, well you know, first and foremost, my daughter as well, like, then that's when I think that I began to really receive those blessings in, in full. Yeah. So let's jump forward, man. Now is the time. You are fighting on a, a Friday night, the zone card on August 4th in your hometown. Well, not, not your home hometown, but in your, where you live at right now, which you could be considered your hometown, Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. Talk to us. Yes, tell sir. us about that fight, man. This is your time. Tell us about your opponent. Tell us where the venue is going to be. Talk to us, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, the opponent's name is uh, Mike Mike Tania. Uh, he's another world-rated, world-rated uh, fighter. Um, he's, he's pretty good. Uh, he, I think he's ranked, like, in the, I want to say, like, high 20s or 30s, maybe. Yeah, um, but, yeah, like I said, he, he's tough. You know, he's, he's uh, 28 and 2. You know, he, he has a lot of experience. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward to it, man. What kind I, of I fight can you – what kind of fight can you perfect. expect him to bring? Oh, like I said, I mean, he when it comes to to me, I, I have a lot of advantages over him. Like I have, I definitely have a size advantage. I have the speed advantage, footwork, power. I mean, pretty much the whole the whole nine. But um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, I never ever overlook anybody. You know, everybody comes to fight. Everybody's there for a reason. He's there for a reason. So, you know, um, I'm just looking to to finally showcase myself and show the world what I can do. I mean, like, this is a moment that I've been praying and asking for 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 years, but for since I, pretty much since I became pro. I've always dreamed of fighting on TV or dream, or fighting on a major platform, you know, and, and it's even more special that my first time, I'm the main event. So, you know, this is my show. You know, I, I'm, I'm the main attraction. So I, I think definitely after this, this fight, I think I will have solidified solidified who I am and, and solidified my name. Talking about solidify who you are, solidifying your name. You've always believed you and your dad always believed that you belong in that company. You belong in the top twenty five and within the top fifteen, the top ten. You're finally there now. But what do you say to your critics that say, "Man, who's this Elijah kid? Why? Why is he headlining an event? Nobody heard of this cat before." I mean, I hear it all the time. I mean, like I said, but that that's why, you know, tune in August 4th on the zone and I would, I, everybody's going to see. they definitely going to see. I mean, like, I'm, I'm a, like, I said it before um, on the show before, I'm a natural born entertainer. This is what I do, what I love to do. You know, a- anytime I go out there, I always want to separate myself from, you know, the other fighters that are out there. And that's kind of a, a reason why I do my, my weigh-in and things and everything else. Like I said, it's about entertainment. And I, I plan to be more than just a fighter. I, I plan to be a public figure. You know, I want to be a, a spectator, someone that that is, is well rounded in entertainment, in the entertainment field, period. And so, you know, it, it just starts with, with with boxing right now. And um, ultimately, like I said, I'm 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 putting it all on the line, August fourth. And you know, I'm getting them up out of there. I'm gonna get them up out of there, and then I'm a I'm a move even even higher. And then after that, I'm I'm calling out another another top five opponent. Like I said, my my goal is to get the world title by the end of this year. If not the end of this year, then maybe early next year. I mean, I know that uh uh in a way in Fulton, you know, they're fighting for um they're fighting for uh, the unified title. That's happening this uh, week. Yeah, exactly. So you know, uh, maybe. Towards winter time, you know, after because I know I think I think they said that Tapala is also also can you know he's the other belt holder other belt holder. Uh, I think he's gonna challenge like the winner of them or whatever. So you know it, it'll probably all it'll probably be undisputed uh, at that weight class. You know I'll probably get a chance to fight for undisputed. So there you go. Um, who, who knows, man? I, at the end of the day, I'm staying locked in, staying focused, and anybody who gets in there, gets in there with me at one point too. That, they gonna have they gonna have a a, a hard ass night. That's right. Mm-hmm. Speaking about right, rankings up. and resumes, sometimes us that you know we sit at home and, and we watch you guys fight, 
We just saw the, we just saw what Jerron Edis did uh, this weekend, man. He put on a doggone clinic. He put on a spectacle, and 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 I knew from the time I first saw Jerron that, that he was that he was that dude. You're right. For the mm-hmm. first time I laid him, man, he laid eyes on him. You know what I'm saying? He was that dude. Yes. But people still feel. I mean, you were ringside. Mm-hmm. You were ringside. You were VIP. You were watching this fight. People still feel that his resume still doesn't warrant a world title shot. Man, I heard that stuff this morning. Mm. That was like, maybe I need to see him against Stanley Onis or something like that, but he's not ready for the Crawfords. He's not ready for the for the Errol Spencers, which I believe none of them two ain't going to be there anyway after they fight. I think they're going to both of them going to move up anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for fighters like you that, that, that reach the 15, the top 10, calling for these world title shots, do you? I understand that having top ten fighters on your resume can do nothing but helpful for experience. But in your opinion, is it a requirement to fight for a world title? Um, to an extent, I mean, like in, in Bruce in Bruce's case, I mean, like I said, I, I agree with you. Like I said, I feel like Spence and Crawford they're they're kind of on the on the back end of the. You know, like they're getting ready to make their exit. So I feel like they're gonna get their money, you know, had a super fight, get their money, do a rematch or whatever of the winner, and then, you know, kind of go from there. And then they'll they're kind of already set set their career after that. I feel like Bruce is, is pretty much you know, he's the the next best thing at forty seven. He's gonna take over forty seven after after they run for sure. Um, but I mean I, of course him him uh I, I would like to see him versus uh, another like top Top guy like Stanley Onis or Virgil Ortiz or or one of them guys, but I think as a matter of fact, I think Virgil Ortiz is going up to fifty four. So I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if he if he can't get those um get those those titles in the imminent future, like as as he will want to, maybe he should consider going up to fifty four and or something. I mean, for a time. But I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm not really sure, but I mean, at the end of the day, I like I can understand his 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 um need to chase greatness for sure yeah. but you know sometimes sometimes the policies don't always uh, go in our favor but as a fighter it, like, let's take you for example if somebody was to give you a world title shot after this fight against Stephen Fulton against in yeah. you know and, and let's just say hypothetically speaking based on what based on what you fought so far as your career has been going on I mean, I know you'll take it. That that's that you know you don't pass up a world title, but mentally, you know, confidence wise, do you feel like you're ready to fight for that world title? Is Boots right now, based on what you saw? Right, I guess I'm making the argument, and I'm getting a fighter's perspective on all these criteria. Us as fans say back here, but you know, oh man, he ain't ready for a world title shot. But only you guys know. From what I from what I seen with Boots. This past weekend, yeah, he definitely ready for it. What's yeah. about that? I mean, dude is dude is sharp. He raised the sharp. Yeah, dude, dude, he he he, he nice. I, yeah. I was I was very very impressed you know, to, to see him do what he did. Um, it was it, it even motivated me to an extent because I, even when as towards the end when he started kind of playing around, he he did he actually done a couple of moves that I. I saw, I saw that. <laughs> if we if people watch your videos, man, I was like, man, that, that must be Elijah Pierce, man, when he's you know in, in the ring, especially your sparring yeah. sessions. <laughs> yeah, I, I swear he was doing stuff that I normally do, and yeah. the crowd they was they was going crazy for That's it. That's right. So, That's right. And I was just like, man, I cannot wait. Like I can just only imagine when people really see me and my natural element in the ring, like then you know I, I'm only going to expect the same reaction, the same type of feeling. So. I'm, I'm that that just really invigorated me, made me just like, super excited. So, um, but yeah, I, I I feel like I'm, de- I'm definitely ready as well. Not necessarily. I mean, I ain't gonna act like I just got the most spectacular resume either. But I have fought and beat a lot of undefeated guys. I beat guys, a bunch of guys with winning records. I've upset a lot of guys I was supposed to lose to. Um, and on top of that, like I said, in the early part, in pretty much the early part of my career, I, I fought up. I was fighting. I was a natural, to be honest, a natural one eighteen pounder fighting one thirty five, one forty. Yeah, yeah. And still, you know, and still getting guys, uh, getting guys out of there. So at the end of the day, 
that that's not a, a being in the 122 division now doesn't warrant any fear for me. I, I I'm I'll fight anybody. Uh, and I feel like I'll beat any beat anybody in the division. I feel like my toughest fight will probably be uh say Stephen Fulton. Honestly, um, I, I'm not in a way. I, I feel like in a way, uh, skill wise is the, is probably the best. But at the same time, he's very small. You know, he's coming from 118, and I feel like. With him, I would have a lot of advantages as well, um, especially uh, um, uh, considering that, like, I'm um, like I said, I'm just, I just have a lot of attributes uh, over him. Like I said, we, he, he's a you know he can punch and everything. I can punch as well. You know, I'm fast. He's fast. Uh, I feel like I have better footwork, um, but you know, and then I also have the size advantage over him. I'm way taller than him, so um, you know. So I, of course, I, I'm. I'm not really worried about any competition that team to. Like I said, I've been calling out all the top dogs. I called out John Rio, Casemiro, you know, and that was, that's been getting some traction and whatnot. Of course, a lot of people think it's a, it's a, a, a like it's a, a, a low risk, low reward fight. I don't see how. Like I said, when, and when he had four losses and I, I have two losses and I have more knockouts than him. And I, I feel like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, excuse me, a higher knockout percentage than him. And then um, at that, like, he's, he, he's, he's, he's kind of old, older as well, too. He's kind of stepping into the later years. I know I know he's just trying to get that get that big fight with Inouye or, 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 or Fulton as well. So, yeah. you know, I, I know he, he wouldn't want to risk it with me anyway. But, I, I mean, I feel like I'll take I'll take uh, Casemiro's as easy. Honestly, but so like I said, man, any of these guys, I'm, I'm ready for them, and I'm, I'm gonna make a statement with with Mike Planier August fourth. The wolf is hungry. The wolf has been on the hunt, taking down fighter after fighter, after Via. What's next? Um, after after Mike Planier, like I said, I, I'm I honestly, I want to get right, Mike. Mike, man, I still got the video fighter by head. But after Mike, oh, man, what's, <laughs> yeah, what's next, man? Oh uh, yeah, I want to. I would like to uh, challenge uh, Ryan Saline actually next because uh, you know he he fought uh, Mike Planier his last fight. You know that was that was his last fight, and um, you know after he lost, you know now now that he's lost to Sam Goodman, I know he's needing a fight to kind of get back to the position that he was in where he can challenge for the title title again. Mm -hmm. uh, in that eliminated position, so him uh, being that he's number one on on box record, and I'm number two. I feel like it's only right. Like, why not give me that shot? And honestly, like I said, I've already fought him in Vegas before, and I mean, I I I love that fight. I would love to have that fight. I don't think he would be interested in having that fight with me, but I would definitely love that fight. What's so crazy about fans when we don't see is the stuff that happens behind closed doors. And 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 you know you can never equate sparring to a match, but you've you've been a spar partner for a lot of folks, man. You've been in the ring with Javante Davis, you you fought Roly Romero, you beat him, you know, in the amateurs. Uh, you you you've sparred some 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 top dudes, man. That that have given you a lot of rounds, that have given you a lot of experience, and plus you for them, you know. So now now mm -hmm. is your time, man. The the wolf is eating eating. What's gonna satisfy your hunger? Tell the folks. What's gonna satisfy the wolf's hunger? When is gonna wolf gonna stop eating? No, I never, nothing, nothing but that title, nothing but that title is gonna is gonna even even not even just getting the title. Like one, I have to unify. I have to become undisputed or or unify either either one or the other before I move up to twenty six or 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 thirty or, or wherever else I go. You know, at the end of the day, like I said, I'm I'm here for a good time, not a long time. You know, at the end of the day, I, I do have, you know, I want to have longevity in the sport. But, you know, I like I said, I'm, I'm entertaining. So at the end of the day, I have a lot of abilities and a lot of things that I can give to the world. So ultimately, it's all, it's all in a plan. It's all, you know, going to happen piece by piece. And I just feel like once I, once I, I win this fight, I think it'll finally give me that solidification that I need to, for people to really wake up and be like, okay, this dude right here, like, he, he, he he's something for real. And, I, and people can kind of quit playing with my name because, you know, especially with the, with the tank sparring video out, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, they're, 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 they're finding out 
about me through that, you know, some from the Tremaine Williams fight as well, but mainly through the, the Tank Davis one. That's mm-hmm. that's pretty much like my my biggest uh my where I'm getting the most publicity right now. Yeah. But um, and, you know, and a lot of people they're 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 looking at me as if I'm trying to hold on to something that was had that happened ten years ago, which is you know the furthest thing from the case. At the end of the day, like I said, I had I uh the reason I even like I said I put it out was because I needed people to understand that I am who I say I am. Like I said, I've I've been like like you even stated, I've been in the ring with multiple world champions. Gary Russell, Rasheed Warren, uh Jojo Diaz. Like I said, I didn't spar these guys, uh, and I've hung with these guys. I've done great work with these guys. And and I'm a a smaller guy than, than all of them. Mm-hmm. I've all, I've always been smaller than all of them, and I've still been able to hold my own against them. So, for people to question question my ability and question my character, of course I'm gonna take offense to it. So ultimately, I I gotta you know set the record straight and let people know that I'm here at the end of the day, and I and I ain't going no damn way. Like I said, I I will and I will be world champion. I'm excited for you, man. I can't wait for August fourth. I want to be. Uh... Uh, either ringside if if I get credentialed, or I want to be watching from home, man. By the way, man, I, I'm excited for you. This is your time to use this platform, to show your fight, sell your fight, sell yourself. Tell people where they can watch, where they can follow you on social media, where they can follow the Wolf Get Wolf merchandise. If they want to sponsor you, because you're looking for sponsorship, they can put their names on your trunks. This is your time, Absolutely. and this is your time. Call out whoever, a bunch of people. Your fight is international, so the whole world reach our platform. This is your time. To call these big names out, man. Handle your business, baby. No doubt. Well, like I said, yeah, if anybody want to cop some merch, man, like I said, uh, I can reach out. Um, reach out to my design team. Um, or like I said, you can just go to ho- hoopfiends.com. And uh there's there's a panel where where you can get the exclusive wolf wolf merch. Um, like I said, once again, it's hoopfiends.com. Um, yeah, like I said, we got a lot of stuff. We got hats, we got we got shirts, we got sweaters, hoodies, everything, uh, everything you can want. Um, yeah, man, I, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to have have everybody come up, come out to this thing. You know what I'm saying? On on, on the pack wave, man. That's that's what I'm about. I'm about family. I'm about unity. At the end of the day, like I said, I, I appreciate all my sponsors who have been there for me thus far. That's how I've been able to concentrate and focus on my boxing career solely, while also being a full-time father and taking care of my daughter solely as well. So, you know, I appreciate um, my guy Cortez Coleman. You know, he's a he's a big sponsor of mine, a Happy Blood Brand, CBD, uh, my boy Milton Watkins, Louis Gibbs, um, my boy Azim Cooper, uh, Wayne Cooper, his father, um, uh, Ricky Manzanare uh, from Don Jose Mexican Restaurant out here in OTL. Um, uh, my, my boy Fred Cato, that's my, my cousin. Like I said, um, it's a, a a lot of good guys, man. I, uh, my boy Sean Freeman. Uh, it's it's a lot of good guys who, who are behind me, and I'm just thankful that that you know I have the support system that I do. Um, like I said, I, I would love to get Raiz Salim next uh, after I beat Tania or or Casemiro. Anybody who's gonna give me that eliminated spot, I I, I just I I need the title. Like I don't feel like like I said, nobody beats me. At the end of the weight class, I feel like I'm the boogeyman of this weight class. People will have yet to really see it. They they're gonna see it August fourth. I mean, it's just it's plain and simple. I, I I've been putting the work in. Action speak louder than words. I may talk a lot of shit at the end of the day, but action speak louder than words. I'm getting these guys up out of there, and I'm making it look easy. Like I said, Tremaine Williams was a world title challenger. Like I said, he fought for the world title. He he was he was very he was actually favored to win the world title against Angelo Leo in that fight. And but yet, like I said, I, I I beat him the whole fight. Like it it was it was completely unanimous. There was no dispute. It wasn't close at all. Like really, they should have stopped the fight. But I know that we was in his hometown, so they would probably you know they didn't want to necessarily do that. But I mean, that's just what it was. That's right. And so there, so man, really, like I said, just anybody anybody who wanted can get it. Uh, I'm ready for any and whoever and. August 4th, I'm going to make this statement. Yeah. And after that, I'm, I plan to go even bigger. 
Well, there you have it, fight fans. August 4th, tune in to the Zone Friday Night Fights. Headlining the card will be Elijah the Wolf Pierce, uh, his first uh, television debut headliner. So go ahead and go to his website. If you're in the Atlanta area, go to the website and get tickets. Come out and support Atlanta. Atlanta, man, you got to be a full supporter uh, uh, of this young, you got a young fighter representing your, uh, your city. So come out there and support Elijah Pierce. Uh, get tickets on oh, Instagram. Yeah, and, uh, uh-huh. and I'm always re- I'm always ripping the 405 too. Like I said, I'm ripping outside right. no side, no side GA, but I also rip the 405 too. 405, that's right. the city, you know that that's 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 my home, man. You know, Oklahoma, and, Oklahoma I, City, get yeah. you the zone subscription <laughs> and watch and watch really? a lot of fight, man. That's right. We we started this thing in Oklahoma, man. Look at us now, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, that's right. sir. Yeah, man. And I mean, and also. I, I want to give a you know a, just a shout out to my to my team as well you know shout out to my dad uh shout out to my my stepfather my co-manager uh Jason Painfully shout out to um my my manager uh Trufon Petrov like I said that that dude has been nothing but 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 great to me like he's honestly like I couldn't ask for a better manager um you know thanks to my promoter uh Tony Jetter and his wife Kristen Jetter you know they they do a, a great job you know that uh, helping me as well. Um, thank, I'm thanks to my my training staff, uh, Elaine Philippe, uh, Aaron Salomon, uh, to my mom. I said, love you, mom. Um, my uh, the, my my Wolf merch team. Like I said, all my three older brothers, Marcel Dupre and Dante. I said, they they are you know what I'm saying? it's just I got I got such a, a good infrastructure right now. Like I said, having that team, man, that that's literally changed the whole game for me. Once I started yeah. to really, once I really started to lock down and get everything solidified on that spectrum, like everything has just been so smooth, and I, I love it. Like I, you know, I got, I got a, a. It's like the more I keep going up, the more uh, I guess like fancy and, and stuff. It just kind of gets me. It's, it's just cool, you know, to be in, be in that space. You know, like I got a, a a a promotional team now. You know, I have videographers. You know. Uh, shout out my my videographer crew. I mean they 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 do their thing. I mean it, it's just awesome, man. So like I said, I'm blessed to be in this position, and you know I, it's been a long time coming. That's right, uh, a long time coming. That's right, man. And, and you finally no standing eight box of podcasts. We discuss so every fight organization fans, and weight class. With your whole bronze bomber so educated so with the craft. Punch a topic so hard so like heavyweights so hitting the bag area, from the top rank right to the upcoming. Washed up to the dark horse. Champ number one contenders. Quick jab or sharp cross. We so tuning in. You can have it internationally known. Our information is valid. See, we on a higher plane. No two episodes the same we get better oh, as you oh, train yeah, so on top we remain you know, come uh, join the conversation this ain't sight uh, no, your game and then outside of the rain we do the damn you know, thing like said, they they seem to themselves they they seem to great to me as well so like i said and, and i'm definitely gonna show up and show out put on and i'll continue y'all stay tuned i'll continue all right chat talk to you later all right man.